I realized something today that for a long time in my life I strived for success not just for myself but for my family for my wife and my kids I wanted to make a lot of money because I thought that they would be happy if they all had their own room and if they all had their own bicycles and if they all had their own cars and horses and whatever else they wanted that that would make them happy but I missed the boat it wasn't too late but I did miss the boat it was a, more about me loving them and being with them and being intimate with them and actually being there when I was there than um, striving to be successful so that I could give them what I thought they wanted when truly deep down in their heart they needed to be loved and they needed to be cared for and paid attention to and taught and shown how to build things and shown how to put puzzles together and play games together and listen to their worries and just be a mentor to them more than a father but a friend in a way uh, without losing the respect line and today I was watching a really good teacher speak on his Twitter and he just brought something to my mind and it's a slogan that I'm gonna start using now because uh, we're all about being motivated. We want to be motivated. We want to be, um, you know, disciplined enough to be able to be very good or excellent at whatever we're doing. We want to uh, have the strength and the energy and the health. So we're always trying to, you know, eat well, do our exercise, sleep as much as we can to try to be healthy. Uh, but we do have to look at why we're doing it and what the real core motive is. If if it's not messed up and um, maybe distorted by some motives that we think are good that aren't good and that's why I told you the story at the beginning because something hit me today like a ton of bricks and one of the things that that um, I've known for a while now is that if you serve and have a servant heart and don't expect anything back one, you don't have to worry about being mad at people for not giving you back what they borrowed. But two, you are free. You don't have any any fears uh, because you're basically constantly in the giving mode and you're not in the receiving mode. So uh, I thought about one thing that I would like to be in my life, really that my flesh would become, that I would actually transform into this person. And it was to be a master motivator, that I could encourage people to be better, that I could help people to be fascinating at what they do, that they're you know excellent and superb and that they live well and that they love well and that they take care of their wives and their children and they focus back on the more important things in life. We're not taking anything with us, folks. We are not taking anything with us. So we came into this world but naked and we're going out but naked and we're not going to have anything with us except what we put in the spirit if if we didn't build anything in the spirit world then that's going to be your treasure so my new motivation today is to be a motivator is to be uh, to motivate other people to live well and um, encourage them and listen to them and be somebody extraordinary and not try to do it because I want to get recognized but do it with with a selfless heart so that people can really see that I'm genuine and I think this is the success in life or should I say in death because once we go we can take all of our diamond rings, our Rolexes, our cars, our houses, and everything we have, and we can just say goodbye because it's not coming with us. And it's going to be there way long after we're gone. Somebody's going to fight over it and try to sell it and whatever else and see if they can make some money with it. And it might even be your own kids. Because I think this form of life where we constantly are in the giving mode and motivating people and encouraging people that motivates yourself and if you ever did come to the point where 
you are in a assistant living or a nursing home or you're incapacitated and your kids have to figure out what to do with you, no matter what they do with you, if you live like I'm talking about, you'll be able to stay in that home or wherever you are and just continue on with what you were doing. You won't be mad at the world. You won't be mad at your kids because you're not expecting anything. It's only when we expect something that we can actually get mad. So if you don't expect anything, then you won't get mad and you'll live free. And one of the things that I always talk about is a German word called Existenzangst. And that's existential fear. And for me, what that means is that we live thinking that we need to do something to continue to live. When actually the spirit of God is allowing us to live. I mean, any day we could we could have a heart attack or we could die or we could get sick um, so we don't know how long we're gonna live so that's kind of a mystery right there so that should tell us that we shouldn't try to manipulate that I mean we should just be there I'm here with you right now I'm not thinking about what I'm gonna do next I'm not thinking about where I'm going I'm trying to give you some information that might motivate you to change your life and that's all I'm saying. If we encourage other people to live well and we watch them grow, then we will grow. And you'll start to feel the energy of the love that comes through that. And that will be your sustaining power. That will be the riches that you want. It won't be monetary riches. It's going to be a spiritual wealth. Because when we die, we want to go to a place where that has been collected and we can rejoice over that and continue to live in that in that momentum. We don't want to die as a greedy fool thinking that we're building these treasures here on earth and that's what was going to keep us happy. It's all temporary. So for an eternal word, <laughs> I guess you could say, um, for myself, I'm talking about myself and I'm talking to myself, is to really try to wake up in the morning with a good attitude no matter what the oohs and ahs are or what's hurting in your body um, and, and not let that drive your day. There's never really a Monday. I mean, it's only a Monday because you let it be a Monday. You know, somebody can try to run me off the road and, I'll, and I get mad at them and I want to, you know, run them down. Well, uh, that's my problem. It's not their problem. I mean, they did something to me, but that doesn't give me the right or it, it doesn't even, uh, what am I trying to say? It, it, you don't even need to make the decision to go there is what I'm saying. You can just say, God bless them. I hope they have a better day tomorrow. I mean, and I'm learning that. I'm not saying I have this down. I'm just saying it's a realization. And I think the realization comes first and then the manifestation in life is what happens after that. So as we get older and things start slowing down, we begin to contemplate about what life is. And uh, this was just a cool note that I got today about my motivation. What is my motivation? To motivate others, because that's what motivates me. And if I can make that my motivation and, and keep it genuine and not use it to embark on anything else, then I think I've got something going there. If you agree, let me know. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks.